Hey guys, this is Chris Fate coming back at you, and today we're going to be continuing on with Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and uh, we want to continue on. If you remember last time, if you have not seen the last video, I really recommend that you go to watch it because we're just picking up where we left off. And uh, I really appreciate all the comments in the last video, and uh, you guys are right. I did figure this out while the video was rendering, but uh, uh, if you remember last time when we looked up the health address in Browse Memory Region down here in the memory dump, and we changed the display type to float, you can see that we get <clears throat> the current uh, health right here, and we also get the current mana and the cat mana right here and that's all in float however we didn't know what this value was so i went ahead and loaded that on here anyway and we changed this value to something and it just made a whole string of orbs and everything well that's because this is actually an integer not a float so and you run into that occasionally now while they, they do this I, I really don't know uh some of you more proficient in computer assembly may have answers to that i don't know but it seems like this uh, the cap version of this is being used in integer four byte form and then later converted to its float form you know to write to our health but what if we wanted to uh always write our cap to our current and our cap happens to be a four byte but our current happens to be a float how can we do that well that's what we're going to talk about today there are several ways to do it but i'm only going to talk about one way and today we're going to talk about using the fpu stack okay and we're going to use the fpu stack and a couple of commands that uh, you can use to convert these things you can either do it from an integer to a float or a float to an integer and I'll talk about both of them, but for today's purposes, we're going to talk about converting this 4-byte cap to a float, to always write to our health. And uh, that's what I want to do. So let me go ahead and uh, get prepared and everything ready to go on my end, and we'll come back and we'll get started. Also, if we got time, uh, instead of just having also the health or the cap always running to the health we're going to backtrace the health and see if maybe we can find a more prominent god mode where nothing hurts us and we're going to see if we can fit that in here if not i'll try to fit it in the next video but i'm going to try to fit it in this one all right thanks guys for holding let me go to this spot in memory and we're just going to go directly to the address because i have not updated my game so the address should still be the same bear with me just one second There we go. And right here, we're just going to go to address. Control V. And this is where we injected our code last time. If you see here, if I turn this on, this is where we injected our code using an AOB uh, injection. And this will take us to the allocated memory. And this is where it's writing uh, our injection copy but we can also put our infinite health script here as well if we want and uh, that's what we're going to do so i'm going to go ahead and bring this up and we're just going to go ahead and get started on it my computer's lagging just a little bit there we go so bear with me in that regard if it does that i'll just reboot and uh, we'll just pick up where we left off all right what what I need to tell you is there's two different stacks that the computer uses. There's the regular stack, and that's for the integers. And then you got the FPU stack, which is for the float. It's called the float floating point unit stack. Okay, so the FPU stack. And we've discussed this in many vids in the past. And actually, I've done a vid similar to this in the past of converting uh, integer to a float and float to an integer. But you know, we run into it again, and it's a good time to bring it back up. So that's that's why I'm doing this. And uh, what we're going to do is there's a couple of commands you can use depending on what you're trying to do you can either convert the integer to a float using the FPU stack or you can also convert a float to an integer but in this particular case we're going to be converting the cap integer to a float so we want to learn one specific command which is FILD field FILD we're going to be loading a uh, onto the FPU stack an integer 
and that's what we're telling it. We're loading an integer, we're converting, and basically what it's going to do is going to convert that integer into a float value and load it onto the stack. And then we're just going to save that new value into our health. And that's what it does. That FILD, we're telling it that it is an integer. We want it changed to a float, load it on the stack, and then we're going to put it into our, our health address, which is a float. So we can get started on that right away. And I'm just going to do it up here in new mem. I'm going to keep this a little bit separately. because, And this is our infinite health. So... Okay, hopefully that will take care of it. It was really lagging bad and my mouse was lagging, so if it does that again, I'm sorry. It's just I got a lot of stuff going on in the background here and I need to cut some of it off. And But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So what I want to do is we want to load our health cap onto our... Let's bring up our address again. We want to load this health cap onto the FPU stack and convert it to an integer. And we know that our health is at RAX plus 10, so we know that our cap, if you see, our cap is going to be at RAX plus 1, 4. If we convert this over to, uh, or place this on 4 byte decimal, you'll see there's the 30, and that's 4 bytes right here. Okay? So that's what we're concentrating on. So we want to load that onto the FPU stack, convert it to its float. So we're going to FILD as the command instead of FLD. And we can put D word pointer. All right. And then RAX plus 14. 14. So we want to load that health cap, that integer health cap, onto the FPU stack and convert it to a float. And all we need to do is just store and pop it back off the stack which is fst which will put it back wherever we want it to go and pop it off the stack fstp we need it off the stack the word pointer and we want to store it into rax plus 10 and that's all there is to it same as the push and pop we need it pop back off the stack so it doesn't stay on the stack and uh, get confused in the system and that's really all there is to it now if if this happened to be a float in our health an integer we would have to do it like this we would load the float onto the stack and we would store it like this fist f-i-s-t we want it stored as an integer into this address so really all we're doing is loading floats onto the FPU stack. It's converting a float or converting an integer to a float or taking a float and converting it to an integer depending on what you need it to do. So if you're loading an integer you want to FILD. If you're storing an integer you want to FIST. All right so filled and fist. So we need to convert an integer to a float and store it as a float. So that's how you would do it right here. So we're going to click OK. And let's turn that off and back on. Let's uh, change our health to like 10. Let's make sure it goes down. And so when we turn our script back on, now this is, remember, this is an area that's constantly being accessed. So it's going to be red right away, and our health should automatically go right up to 30. So let's take a look, make sure it does that. So I turn it on. Go back to the game. Let me pull this down here. Go back to the game. And take a look. Our help is went back to 30, so it did successfully convert it from its integer form to a float. And let's take some damage. And you see we have infinite health. Alright, but you can also see that when we take damage, it kind of interrupts our play a little bit. You got the graphic effect of turning red, and he makes that little noise, and he kind of jumps back a little bit. What if we wanted a god mode where we could run into enemies or thorns or things like that and not be affected at all? Well, that's more like a god mode, we're going to take a look at that next. Okay, that, that seemed real easy, you know, to convert, you know, to write our cap to our to our health and then we saw that that was not a shared opcode it's only us going through that opcode so that's why we're able to do that now if if it was shared we'd have to go compare out and then do it and separate it and things like that so luckily so far this game does not have uh hero and enemies going through the same opcode for health 
So if we want to get one hit kills later, which we might do, is uh, we'll have to go find enemies health separately. Uh, but we'll may, we may take a look at that on, a, on another date. Right now, let's see if we can get God Mode. And what that is, is if you take a look, when we go into the game, let's go back to it. Now, we got our infinite health on right now, but I want you to look at everything that happens when we get hit. And to see it better, maybe it would be good to slow the game down just a little bit. Uh, let's slow it down about half speed. Or maybe a little less than half speed. That'd be better. But see, the game, the, the character's acting normal until we take a hit. Then it does a variety of things. If you take a look, we take a hit, take a look. He flashes, he jumps back, and makes this little sound. Plus our health goes down if we didn't have our infinite health on. So there's lots of things that's actually going on. You see him jump back, you see the flash, you see the little, you hear the little squeal, and then our health will go down. Well, what that is doing in the game, there's like a compare going on to see if we have taken a hit. If we if it meets that condition, then it's going to go down this call structure and uh, and perform all those acts of him jumping back and blinking white and red, him making that little squeal, and our health going down. So we want to see if we can intercept some of that and see if we can maybe prohibit him from jumping back, flashing, and, and stuff like that, where we bump into an enemy that's not reducing our health or anything. And that's what we're taking a look and see if maybe we can find that in the call structure. Does that make sense? And that will sort of give us a, like a God mode. Now what I want to do is I want to take this out just for the moment. I'm going to comment it out with the braces. Just so we don't have infinite health right now, so we can test uh, our God mode. Let's uh, put it back up to full speed. I just want you to see, what, you know, the different things that happen when a condition is met. Okay, we're back to full speed. So let's take a hit and make sure our health goes down. You see that it does. So good. All right. So what we want to do is I want to go ahead and put... Uh, the debugger on this I'm gonna do what access is but really what I'm wanting is just where it's writing yet or just something that pops up when we take a hit not something that's constantly accessing like this we've already got a, a script on this and that's not where I want to put my break and trace I want to put a break and trace on just when we take a hit so let's go take a hit and see what pops up in the system and we know those are good errors we can use all right so here is the writing op code right here. This is where it eventually writes to it. So let's go ahead and stop that. And you see that only is accessed when we actually take a hit. We could also put our infinite health script here as well. We could have done the same thing here and the same thing. So just remember one thing if you do that is that your registers that store in your base address are different. So instead of uh, REX in the first one, it would be RCX. So keep that in mind. They're in uh, different parts of memory here. But anyway, I digress. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and put the break and trace on this instruction. First, you always need to test to make sure it's not shared. I always do this. Because if it's shared, you're going to have to compare out with the break and trace. You're going to have to do a conditional break and trace. But for the time being, let's just go make sure. I don't I don't think it is. And if I hit the enemy, he's gonna die, so I don't wanna I don't want him to die right now. But I've already done this and he does not pop up. It's not shared with enemies, or at least not this enemy. So we can use it for our purposes. So we can just take a hit, no other enemies are going through it right now. So we can do that to break and trace our guy, our health. We want our health to go back. And we wanna see the call structure of our health. So I'm going to turn all three of these on right here, place the break and trace on it, and we're going to go take a hit. Now, if this was constantly accessing like the other is, we'd already get breaking information. That's not what we want. We want only when we take a hit. So let's take a hit, boom. And this is the call structure that the health is going back up when we took a hit. 
So we want to expand all. All right, well, we hit the guy, so he's going to die now. So that's all right. But that's okay. We got the information we want right here. And this is the call structure. It goes back up all the way from... And if you take a look, this is uh, everything that's happening when we take a hit. Everything. So there's a lot going on, even more so than we thought. So keep that in mind also. Uh, but what I like to do is see if maybe we can go back in time and interrupt some things. And we do that just by going to a call. And you can do it by going to the top of the call structure. Or, I'm sorry, the top of this... Uh, function and put a return or we can just knock out the call and it's it's good to experiment with both but really it's just a trial and error type thing there's no lot logic to it actually we're just preventing that call from being done and if you notice in the call tree it's going down the call structure it hits that return it goes back to the previous call and that one goes all the way to the return oops that one goes all the way to the return and goes back to its previous call. And that's why it's called the call structure. So it's tracing back the call tree. So it's going from call to call to call to call to call. So basically what I did when I clicked on this is I went back to its previous call. And what I did was just knocked it out. This is what called our health function to subtract our health. So what I want to do is keep it from going there. And that should keep it from writing our health. So let's go back and let's go find another enemy or some thorns or something. I know there's an enemy around here. There, there's an enemy. Alright, take a look. We're getting hit, but if you take a look at our health. Our health is not going down. We do not have our infinite health on, so we are not losing health. But yet, it's still not giving us like a God mode because it, he's still being affected by being hit. So I wonder if we could take out that flashing and that jumping back. Well, what we do is we just go back in the call structure and just try mopping out some more calls or or putting a return or have it jump over a call or something. So who knows? So let's go down to the previous call. We just keep going down the tree. If you see what I'm doing, I'm just going to the very next one. Sometimes I like looking to see if there's a jump that may go over the call and modify it that way. But in this particular case, we don't need to. We can just replace with that does uh, replace it with knobs that does nothing, and we just test it out. Okay, we're still looks like going through the act of taking damage. We're still not losing health, which is good. But he still is behaving like he's being hit. And this may not even work in some games. Some games this may not work at all and you got to go different routes. I mean, but, you know, it's always worth a shot. It's always worth a try. So we go down to the next call. Let's first see if there's maybe something that jumps over this call. I don't really see anything. And let's... Knock that one out. We're just knocking out calls. We're going up the tree and knocking out calls. And take a look at this. He's not even acknowledging. It's not even hitting our field. The character has a collision field and it looks like it's not even hitting that. So it's not even noticing we're being hit. So this looks like a good spot. Let's let's see if, make sure we can kill the enemy. And it looks like we might have a fairly good place for our god mode right here. And there's some thorns right there. Let's hit them. And take a look at that. We can stand on the thorns. Now, if I didn't have that on, let's restore that. If I didn't have that on, take a look at what happens. There's thorns right there. Boom. It acts just like an enemy. So, I think we found a good spot where we can have a God mode separately. So, we can have our infinite health right here. And we can also have a separate God mode. One thing about a God mode, if you fall into a pit or something like that, you may not necessarily die. And you have to, you know, load up a previous save. So, 
That, you know, you got to be careful with God mode sometimes. But it looks like a good spot here. And how many bytes do we have in this? We can do a direct byte manipulation. We don't need to allocate memory. We got one, two, three, four, five bytes we need to knock out. So we can just knock out that column and get exactly what we want. And who knows, maybe later in the game we may have to change that. We don't know. Let's do a regular AOB injection to find this opcode in memory by using its AOBs. And we're just going to put a God mode just for our purposes alright and we we don't need to allocate memory we don't need none of this stuff here we do need our name because that's what we're calling this byte in memory we don't want it to jump to new men we don't need it to return however we do want to register our symbol so we're going to keep that and we're going to keep this because we need it to revert it back to its original bytes. And we don't need it to deallocate new mem because we're not jumping to new mem. We're doing what's called a direct byte manipulation. Whoops, sorry about that guys. A little bit of technical difficulties there. But basically what I was saying, we're doing what's called a direct byte manipulation. Bear with me one second here. And basically what we're telling Cheat Engine in that regard is we are... We want you to go, we want you to scan for these array of bytes, which means that there are no other bytes in this entire module, which is the reason for the AOB scan module. There's no other bytes in that particular sequence. And when it finds it, we want you to name that very first byte, which is right here, which is that call. We want you to name that very first byte God mode. And right here, we telling it we want it to change something here so what we want to do is we want to change it to five knocks now i know that there's not times five and everything in this new cheat engine i hadn't quite learned that yet but I, I i'm sorry but uh not five or something like that i'm not doing that here i'm just doing it the original way in which if you take a look when we knock it out the bite Oops, my bad. Hang on one second here. Replace with code does nothing. Yeah, the byte form of that is line zero. I did the wrong one, so make sure we get the right one. Hang on. There we go. This right here. So nine zero. We need five nine zeros there, which is the byte form of NOP. So basically, let's go back to our cheat table. We're going to define a byte, dv, and move that out of the way, dv, and we're going to change those five bytes to nine zero, just like that. So basically, what we're telling Cheat Engine, we want you to scan for that array of bytes, name that first byte God mode, and at that first byte, we want you to change that byte to nine zero and the four bytes next to it to nine zero which will knock it out and when we go to disable or we turn off this code we want you to change that byte at god mode back to e8 and the four next to it back to their original bytes and that's all this script is doing so let's add that to the current cheat table or sign it to the current cheat table and we're going to put in here god mode test to let you know let ourselves know that we haven't fully tested it yet it's probably not a wise idea to be giving it out yet first off we want to make sure that it does uh, knock this entire call out and restore it back properly so let's turn it on and you see it's knocked it out make sure it gets restored back correctly and it does so when we turn it on if you take a look we take no damage whatsoever. We hit an enemy, no enemies. We're just running through enemies. And like I said, we got to play more of the game to see how it's really going to affect our character. It may not be wise to keep God mode. It may be better to use just a regular infinite health, which is why we got it here. Or we can do it uh, differently somewhere else. But for right now, that is a good god move. We can just run right through the game, and we can still kill our enemies if we want to, but we're taking no damage whatsoever. Yeah. 
but that's basically what I wanted to show you this time around and uh, at my job right now I work at the BMW plant in Greer South Carolina and it looks like we're gonna be shut down from the 3rd to the 19th of April so hopefully I can come out with more bids uh, during that time as well so um, I'm going to be playing around with this game, see what else we can find, and we're just going to have a good old time with it, and uh, we're just going to keep going on. Some things will be real easy, some, some things will be more advanced, but we'll just see what we can find and just keep going from there. Let me thank my partners right quick. These guys help keep cheat the game going without these guys and their donations every month or a dollar a month. Uh, I'd have to shut it down because I just you know, I don't have the time or the funds to do it, and these guys provide me the funds to do it. And, I really do appreciate it, guys. Thank y'all so much. And uh, we really appreciate y'all come watching and come joining us over at the Facebook channel and also our Discord channel. Uh, if you have any questions, those are the best places to go. Some of the best game hackers in the world hang out there and can answer questions really good. And uh, I, I learn a lot from them myself. But yeah, I just wanted to get you something else out here, and uh, we want to continue on with this series and just uh, see what else we can find. We'll just keep going. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut on out of here so you guys take care. You keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, it doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care. Man.